Hello everybody and welcome to Resonance Arcade episode 68, another podcast where three mediocre gamers talk about the games that they've played and games that they're looking forward to. My name's Chris and I'm joined by my awesome co-hosts Matt and Denz. Thanks Chris. In our newly named flashback section we're going to be talking about our experiences with South Park, Fractured But Whole, Death Road to Canada, Prey and Monster Hunter World. We're also going to be speculating about The Last of Us Part 2, The Outer Worlds, and Greedfall as a, in our as-of-yet-unnamed uh, section about games we're looking forward to. And also in Hardware Hot Pants, we'll be talking about the new Switch console, GTX 2080 Super benchmarks, and the aftermarket AMD cards that are beginning to surface. But first, before we get going, let's do our competition. This is a section where we... Um, we basically compete against each other, and we have called it... What are you buying? What are you selling? What are you selling? <laughs> buying high. But no, not all of that. <laughs> what are you buying? We will probably get some kind of intro, something in there in post-production. <laughs> um, yeah, so each week, one of the hosts tries to sell a game, tries to pimp a game to the other hosts, all guests, if when we do get guests on. Um, and basically, the, the competition is, are you going to buy it? I, would you go off and buy it at its current price as well? We've set a few more rules this week as well. We're also going to implement a two-minute timer for the person who's selling. Um, so you, we've got two minutes to sell a game, and then we'll go. It's my goal this week, so I've made it hard for myself because these guys got to ramble for about 20 minutes for the last two episodes. Um, and I've forgotten what game I've decided to sell. Let me have a quick look. Where are we? Oh, yes, right. Timer on the screen. Two minutes to go. As of... Now, right, my game no. is Deep Rock Galactic. Have you heard of it to start off with? Yes. Not. You've not heard of it, Danny? Nope. Okay, Never so Deep Rock Galactic is a... Uh, God, I should have prepared this. <laughs> Deep <laughs> Rock Galactic is something I've been playing quite a lot recently. It's got a progression element in it, but essentially you are a dwarf, and it's a co-op game. You get sent off by Deep Rock Galactic, the namesake, um, into a procedurally generated world in one of one or more biomes, and you, you basically have to mine. But there's lots of different scenarios. So the initial scenario is you have to go in and mine. It's a first-person game as well. You go in and mine things like gold. Uh, you get money from gold. Um, you mine uh, nitra, which is uh, what you use to call in supplies at a later date when you run out of ammo. You mine loads of different types of resources. Um, there's... I can't even remember the names of them all, but there's also side objectives as well. So you do a lot of mining, but there's also side objectives like you have to repair these bots or you have to uh, collect a load of these bolo cap um, mushrooms and you get you, you basically get achievements for it. Um, once you've done all of that, you have to rush back. You've got this little cart with you, and the cart is um, called Molly, and you have to call him around, and you have to deposit things in the, uh, in the cart. Uh, once you've done it, once you've done the level and achieved all the objectives, you have to press a button on Molly. He runs back off to your drop pod, and you have to basically get your fight your way back to uh, back to the drop pod. We've got 20 seconds left, by the way. Um, and once you get back to the drop pod, that's it. That's the level over, the game over. But the beauty of it is, is that every time it's different, it's I've have hit a few random number generator problems with it, but it's generally very good procedurally gen procedural generation. 10 seconds, and um, I'm. I really enjoy it, and it's got decent graphics. It's an indie game, and that's it. Time over. Oh, mm. you smashed a lot of information into that. I'll I did. That. Hopefully, I gave you a good idea of what it's about. Have you got any questions? We now. So now um, we get five minutes. I'm not going to put a timer up for this, but we get five minutes roughly to for for them that those two to ask me questions about it. Okay, so I think my first question would be: Is there any sort of progression between levels? Yes, there is. Um, it's you gain achievements and you gain um, perk points and you gain experience and you gain money and all of that goes towards various different things. So you can upgrade uh, how quickly you run. You can upgrade how quickly you deposit things. You can upgrade all of your weapons and all of your armor. Um, and it stays with you as well. So I'm like level 12 on one of my classes. There's four different classes as well. Um, and I'm more, more, probably more than that, actually. Um, and there's loads of different biomes as well. Sorry, I'm going into too much detail. I don't know, shouldn't be allowed to say that. You should be telling, telling me off. But... 
So co-op is in multiplayer, not you and Molly are the co-op duo in that scenario. It's like you can pick four other people to come and join, like three other people to come and join you on your yeah. mission, as it were. Up to okay. four people, but you can play it solo, and I've done a lot of solo playing with a bot. Molly is up, Molly is always there, but there's an additional bot, and you can upgrade the bot separately as well. So you get so if you want, if you fancy playing on your own, you want to go right. I want I need to hit that next level, which I have done a few times. You can just jump in, and it's it levels and it balances itself quite well. I do think that would be a unique concept, though, if you could play as the cart. <laughs> um, well, you can command the cart. You can tell the cart where to, you know, to follow you around and where to plunk itself. You could make that super difficult by being the cart and just pissing off like a good <laughs> mile down the road. <laughs> it does that on its own accord anyway. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so you have to catch me. <laughs> <laughs> when you're playing with three year friends or what have you, there's only one cart still. You've always got a central deposit and it goes off the okay. It's right. absolutely a co-op game. When you're playing together, if you all run off in different directions, you're gonna get murked. Simple as that. Okay. Okay. So what's the combat like in it? Combat's um, shooting mostly, but there's a lot of melee too. Um, you can hit people with uh, pit, hit enemies with your your axe. Um, mm -hmm. You can upgrade all of your weapons. For example, each of each different class has a different weapon, different primary weapon. I was um, I was the driller, so my my primary uh, there's you've got a primary weapon and a primary um, way of getting around as well. So the driller has drills, and you can literally just plow through you can drill from the bottom of the mine shaft all the way up to the top if you really want if you've got enough fuel at the end of the match and people will follow you everyone can mine but you're the drillers like the real good drill and there's people who can um, set platforms there's a zip line guy there's a, a guy who deploys uh, shields um, he's the engineer and turrets and things like that so it's kind of a team fortress ish type thing but not it, it doesn't really feel like team fortress but you can interact with the environment. So like you say, if, if you wanted to dig some sort of strategic hole, you could do that. Yeah, if you want. I mean, it's it's there's a strategy to it in that when the hordes hit you, and it, again, depending on the game mode, depends on how bad the hordes are and, and what kind of enemies you've got as well. They're largely similar. It's spider things, but there's lots of different types of them. And they don't always, sometimes they just randomly appear. Sometimes they uh, are set set pieces sometimes it's a boss sometimes you have to collect an egg before they kick off or something you know there's loads of different scenarios how long would you say like a mission would last in total like and also then how much of that is mining and then how much of that is fighting against the horde as it were so initially when you start off you get easy missions and easy missions are 20 minutes 30 minutes um but the harder longer missions it actually has a, pr a bar um on each mission when you choose it so every 40 minutes or so uh, the global, the world, everybody who's playing, the global map updates and it tells you um, it tells you that this mission is a hard mission, it's, it's, a, it's a long length mission and you know you're going to get these bonuses and these additional things if you do it. Um, so it, it can vary really and, and if you want a quick game and you want you want to go in and get some uh, a specific type of resource you can find one on the map usually that's suitable. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you have to compromise you know so is that a shared seed between everybody then? So say, if, if it's procedurally generated for you, is it the same seed for everybody who plays that hard mission? Uh, yes, if you're on, if you're playing co-op. I don't actually know okay. if, the, if what I've just said there is true. The map is global for everybody. It might be, um, but it's big enough. I mean, all, there's tons of different biomes as well, so you can choose to go in the acid mines or go in a, the volcano, like fiery area, or I can't remember all of the names of them, but plenty of options mm. cool. so there's a lot of equipment you can use as well yeah um the the my favorite equipment is is the zip line and the drill the driller so far so the zip line is um it's like the scout i think um and he and you can upgrade the zip line so you can upgrade the angle that you can fire it at and the distance it'll uh, travel but once you've fired it it's there for the rest of the match um same goes for there's, a, there's an engineer that fires platforms as well, so you can set him so you can walk up a thing. You could play it solo with any of the classes. Some of them are easier than others. I prefer the driller overall. He's the guy I played the most, but my, some of my friends much prefer the engineer. Okay. okay. I think so, that's probably five minutes. Maybe we should put a timer right. on that. On that. <laughs> but, um, I, do, I do have one last quick question. Yep. Can I dig a moat? um no not not technically however 
The, the, the only reason you can't is because that the enemies crawl all, all over the roof. They go down. You know, you can dig a moat if you really want, but it's not going to be that much use because the enemies will get to you because they'll climb down one side across and then up the other because they, okay. they traverse everything, absolutely everything. So that's the main, the main downside or the main uh, benefit they have is that they can get to you no matter where you are. There was okay. one point where the drop pod at the end it comes it lands like 120 130 meters away from you or usually vertically and it landed in the middle of a chasm and the platform that came out of it of it that i had to jump on i just couldn't reach it the only way i could have got to it was drilling into the wall up up the wall across to the ceiling and then just randomly finding the right drop uh, <laughs> like the right area to drop in and i did i did tweet the developers about it and posted some screenshots and they responded on twitter and they said well does that mean that you could have reached it you know you could have reached the, uh, the thing if you had enough fuel and i was like well i didn't have enough fuel though did I? i'd run out i'd run out of nitro for that i don't and i only used like two refills there wasn't enough nitro spawned in the area but it was the only time that i've had any kind of issue with it normally you either die because the mission's too hard. If you put it on the hardest setting, you get lots and lots of extra loot, or you, or you complete the mission usually. Yeah. Anyway, okay. so the price for the game at the moment is twenty four ninety nine. It's an indie game. It's still in early access, and there's like an additional. I think it's like a supporter pack, and you just get some cosmetic things. It's like nine pounds or something. Um, you don't have to get that. I haven't got that, but it does come down in price in sales. Uh, I got it for around about 14 quid, and I personally think it's worth it. So the question is, would you buy it? I think I would buy it. It sounds like my type of game. Like, we always... I've played, like, that kind of game with friends. I'm trying to think of the name of it now, but I think I'll give you a full point for that. It does sound bloody brilliant. Well, you need to buy it and we'll play it because I fucking love it. <laughs> Yeah. It's 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 one of my go-to kind of staple, easy. I could do it at lunchtime, you know, like a twenty-minute game or some, uh, or, or yeah. straight after work or something, you know. Matt, mm, for me, I think I would buy it and I would play it, but I don't think I'd buy it at the full retail pl price. Well, the early access price. It's not the retail price. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the early access price. I I don't think I'd pay twenty-five pounds for it. I would. I'd buy it at fifteen, fourteen pounds. But so, is that one point? So uh, well, no, I'll, that can be half a point if you would buy it at the reduced price, I think. I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I think that is fair, yeah. One and a half points for Chris. So that means that Danny is still currently in the lead <laughs> with his Space, Space Hulk Deathwing. But bear in mind that we hadn't implemented the price thing last week or the timer. So, and uh, I think we'll... We'll go retrospectively through it, shall we? Just, yeah, yeah. We can <laughs> resell it again. Uh, no, Play anyway. Schedule, boys. <laughs> Good stuff. So one, one and a half points to me. So that's me and me and Matt are equal. Danny's still in the lead. Slightly, so we have to smash, slightly. smash Danny next time, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Got to pick a good one next time for me. I don't um, like it, Danny. I'm not buying it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we could, we could be cruel with this, couldn't we? Yeah, you could. <laughs> okay, right. So... I am lost. Right, so we've got a new section, haven't we? We're going straight on to our flashback section, which is games that we've played either this week or recently. It doesn't necessarily have to be this week, because um, Danny has got this thing about, oh, I haven't played, I haven't had time to play this week, and I must put something down that I've actually done. Whereas Matt, Matt, Matt lied to us last week and said that he played a game that he hadn't actually played that week, and he hadn't played it, so, you know. <laughs> I mean, what's two months between friends, right? Really? Yeah, it doesn't matter, does it? Um, so I'm going to let Danny go this, this week first. What have you been playing? Oh, well. Uh, it's going to uh, well the game that I've been playing Chris is Monster Hunter World. Okay. Ooh. Which I'm pretty sure most people well it's for the PC for a start. I'm gonna, not going to be a you know a what have you. But um, Monster Hunter World is obviously just basically a action RPG where you go and hunt down massive monsters. And uh, I've never been into that game before Monster Hunter World. Uh, only because it came out on Steam and my friends were playing it, I was like, do you know what? It looks fun. I'm going to give it a go. And when I did, I did not regret it. It's so much fun to just... It's got a balance between, like, finding new stuff and, like, oh, what's that? And also farming. Sometimes you'll go back to the same thing and farm it again. But uh, the whole gist of it is very story-driven and you just basically come to an island and 
you've got to just try and find out what's happening with the planet basically it's like something's happening something's not quite right with the with the planet that you're on and it's just like we need to find out what's happening and it i'll not ruin the story for everybody but the are you david Atten- attenborough's nightmare basically you, yeah. you're going to destroy the ecology of a planet of a not really destroy the ecology of are, a you planet. Trying... are you culling them are you culling effectively yes <laughs> Effectively, yes, but not on purpose. You're doing it for a good cause. You're trying to find Badger out. Badger culling what... world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're trying to find out what's going on, to like, and why a certain creature is doing something, and why it's migrating, and 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 to get to that particular conclusion, you have to unfortunately call an absolute shit ton of monsters, which... <laughs> not even <laughs> Now the you put it that you, way, it's Not pretty... even the monsters that you're trying to find out about, just other monsters <laughs> in your way. fun, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, the penguinosaurus, yeah. the rare penguinosaurus yeah. needs it's needs. Just like we've never seen one of those before. Let's kill it. Yeah. Um, what? How much is its wing <laughs> worth? Exactly. <laughs> uh, but it's um, it's got co-op in there, which obviously you guys now know that I'm really into my co-op games. Really fun, different classes to pick from, um, and you can kind of change that on the fly as well because you've got the ability. Basically, your class is kind of like what type of weapon you can use. So you've got your big guys with like massive sledgehammers, which I tended to play with uh, i like my slower weapons uh, you've got other people who will use actual ranged stuff which was kind of cool but not my cup of tea i did like to get the big swings in and the, you know like actually chase something down and and like really go ham on it um but you've also got people that have got like um it's almost like a i'll call it magic really uh but there's like a septic type thing that has different things you can put in the end of it and they do different things overall really really good to sort of like try and synergize with your friends and you know take things down quicker and quicker if you're farming or you know if you're taking on something that's super hard you just don't want to die basically so you better synergize your best you can so what's the aim though uh, the actual gameplay what are the, what's the aim of what you're doing um well really it's like <laughs> going back to this the aim of the game really well apart from the story it's sort of improving your character it is that type of game where it's almost like a almost like a i'll go back to dark souls almost like fashion souls like what can i farm to give me the best looking armor that's got the highest resistance for lightning attacks or what have you and okay that also you, looks you redeemed yourself with that last comment there if it's just the looks i was just about to say what the fuck are you playing that game for then if it's just the <laughs> aesthetics no it's just like it's it's basically just to yeah just to make your character better and stronger and you tart them up as, as you go along type deal and uh, yeah is I it really an mmo really enjoy it. um no not a, not an mmo it's uh, it does have like the ability to drop in and out of sessions with people on online but there's no massive arena that you know um that you've got massive you know closest to people doing the same thing it's just like you'll drop into a session with four of your friends or what have you and, and that's right. it it's just you in that instance and that's as far as it goes with it and how far have you got through it so far um i have got to the there's like a there's like a second phase as it were and i've gotten to that it got too hard and then i backed off there's like a, i'd say probably around 70 percent of the way through the game Okay. What's as far as I know, not including the expansion, uh, the level I'm at, uh, bloody hell, um, I think it's only like like low fifties, I believe. So not as high as a couple of friends who have continued to play it and continue to play the expansion. I kind of yeah, taking it very slowly, didn't just go ham on it as much as everyone else kind of did, and uh, yeah. So that's yeah what I've been playing. Good stuff. It's, it sounds I, I I've seen it. I've seen it in. Uh, the magazines and i've seen plenty of reviews for it it smacks to me of like a an mmo witcher 3 kind of um now bearing in mind i haven't played the witcher but oh, i've seen what it's about um i just never got into it well um it's a little bit trying to think of it's a little a little less i'll say it it's a little less varied than i think the witcher is there's not as much to do it's not like as ridiculously open and loads of different stuff to find out in the world you're very much quest driven and that's how it sort of plays out you go back to a base and you'll get quests to go and find something to do and then it's sort of like point a to point b not like point a to point b to point z kind of thing oh look at that let's go and explore that type thing yeah Yeah. that kind of thing 
and it's yeah it's because what it does to you as well is if if you're like a lower level and you do come across something that's dropped into the world like a massive beast and you're too low level and you've not got good enough gear you will just really really struggle to kill that particular thing and it will just kind of knock you off the same applies in the witcher if you go and try and fight a beast a couple of levels above you and you don't have the right oils you don't have the yes you have to oil yourself up in the witcher um uh, all the the right yeah the right concoctions or anything you're going to get your ass handed to you unless you are particularly good at dodging you know time and everything because one or two hits can destroy you and I imagine it's similar to that, but it's different. I mean, it's the the, the RPG element that you know the immersive single player world of The Witcher is different from that M- not MMO that multiplayer kind Experience, of focus. Yeah. Is it multiplayer focused then? Is it recommended to play with friends? I think yeah, it is. Single player for me in any game gets. I have to put it down more frequently if I'm playing single player. If I've got friends to keep egging me on in a game, I will play that for longer periods of time. And that's what happened with Monster Hunter World, really, is people would be like, oh, I need to get this next armor piece. And then it would just be like, oh, well, what can I get? And then if I'm doing something similar, I might be able to, like, you know, tag along on their quest or what have you and help them out. And I might get something out of it kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas if it's just me and a list of checklist items to do, it's kind of like, oh, now I'll go and play something else for a bit. So, yeah, it is. I would say it better with more play. Good stuff. Matt, what have you been playing? You been this week, this week, I have actually played the game this week. So <laughs> catch me out this time. I've been playing South Park: The Fractured But Whole on the Switch. Okay, right. is it any better than the first one? Oh, uh, it's <laughs> different. I, I, I think I preferred the first one. Um, I do prefer the combat on the second one because it's a bit more involved. It's a grid-based system now rather than a turn-based system. And you have okay. different interactions, like some attacks have knockbacks that knock enemies into each other. But I mean, the the game the gameplay is kind of I don't want to say it's an aside from the fact that it's interactive South Park because that's basically what it's there to be. It's interactive South Park, and that kind of is the meat of the game. It's it's very much if you enjoy South Park, you'll enjoy the game. Right. So that's 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 how I felt about the first one, though. The first game very much made me feel like I was playing a South Park episode. And it was wonderful up to a point, and it was the combat that really let it down for me. But in the end, I just got really, really bored of the same thing, and there was not much. There wasn't much variation in it. So I'm glad to. No. Say, I'm glad you say that the combat's better. I've not played it because of the first. Because I got bored of the first one before I completed it. Um, but if would you recommend playing it? I'd recommend it. Just there's a greater depth of combat. Basically, the. You don't just have, you know, attack, special attack, um, fart. summon attack, fart, yeah. I mean, yeah. Those, <laughs> those things are kind of expanded upon. You know, the fart has been expanded to do different things now. It can now diarrhea out enemies. It, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we went in two separate directions there, Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just everything's kind of been taken and expanded upon to just give you a bit more to do like you have i think there's nine different classes now and you can kind of chop and change abilities from them to kind of play how you want to play if you want to be a ranged attack if you want to be up close it, it gives you a little bit more to work with in that respect would you say it's it's what the first game should have been or do you think they've they've just took it in another direction because do you think they've done it because of feedback or do you think they've took taken it in that direction just because it's a natural progression I don't necessarily know if it'd be a natural progression. I mean, the the easiest option would be to just take the combat from the first one and put it into the second one. So the, there's obviously been some discussion about where do we go with this? You know, what what was weak with the last game? What can we do to make this game better? And I, I do, the combat takes a little bit of getting used to, I guess, if you're not used to kind of grid-based combat. But it, I do think it is better. There's certain little quick time events and things such as if somebody says something that's a microaggression, you get a big prompt on the screen that goes, microaggression, hit him. <laughs> and then nice. you, go, you know, go up and punch somebody because they said something about someone in a wheelchair. It's, it's just little <laughs> things like that to, to kind of, it breaks up the gameplay a bit in, in just kind of nice, enjoyable ways. And it's not, it's not too often that you think, oh, God, I've got to go punch somebody because they said something about women again. It's just a nice way of keeping it very right. really. They sound- they've also... They've also kind of toned down the summon system a bit, so it, it felt like in the first one, all you do is just summon the ones that were most powerful, whereas now it's a consumable item, so it kind of limits how much you can use it. it. You have to rely on actual combat a lot more, which is 
I think, a better option because before you just spam summons. Okay. No, I said, I, I, I can't... It's a long time ago since I played it, actually, but I, I, I do remember getting bored, and it's, it's one of them things that I keep thinking of going back to the original game to try and finish it, but I just... There's nothing there for me now, you know. It's 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 been and done. But I might I might very well put that on my wish list and get it in a in a sale. Possibly, I, I would recommend playing it. It's it's just more South Park. It, it's enjoyable. It's the sense of humor is as crude as you'd imagine it'd be. Everything kind of feels right. Even the way the characters interact with you just mm. feels correct. The the whole set of it is just right for you to be in South Park. Good stuff. All right, so uh, I have been playing this week. I've been playing a few games, but what I'm going to start off with, uh, I'm going to say I'm going to talk about two. I was considering not talking about two, but I'm going to talk about two. One because one's quick, and the other one because I've been playing it more. Uh, first one is a game called Death Road to Canada. Um, have you heard of it? To start off with, no. I've played it for the Switch. Oh, cool. Oh, so you'll know what you know. It's a little indie game. It's like a rogue light indie game in that you pick up you you. It's. I, I refer to almost every game that's a roguelike like FTL. Um, so <laughs> okay. it's it's got a similar kind of gaming mechanic to FTL, but it doesn't play anything like it. You know, it's got the same kind of. Uh, you finish. You, you go through the level. You try and complete it. It's absolutely nails to get to the very very end of it and complete the game. But you gain in this game. You gain thing. Gain things called zombo points, and you get to spend them on traits and upgrades and things. It's still very, very much random, though. It doesn't matter what you upgrade and how how you configure your characters; you're still going to get knacked. So it's a zombie game. You, it's like a two a two D um, kind of top down zombie game. You run around, you pick up different weapons. Uh, everything's randomly procedurally generated, and you just have to basically make choices. So it's like a choose your own adventure type game, a little bit. Um, so you you might go to a, a particular area, and you've got a choice to go to a supermarket or a um, or a gun shop or something and you can pick up characters along the way and everyone's got their own different stats and some of them might turn on you some of them might be better at fixing cars another one might be better at shooting you know and it's all completely random i'm quite enjoying it because it get i can play it with my wife downstairs and i can play it with my mates as well um and it's it's a lot of fun uh, it's just a quick pick up have a go you know 10 20 minutes or whatever haven't completed it yet don't think i'll ever complete it because it's absolutely rock hard have you matt um, no, I've never completed it. It's it's one of those games though that I do want to keep going back to just because, like, you said, it's the sort of thing you pick up, you play for five minutes, then you die for some stupid thing like you know you have died of dysentery. Cause it, it's basically yeah. a retelling <laughs> of Oregon Trail, isn't it? It's kind of an updated, stylized version of that. Yeah, you know the original roguelike <laughs> yeah. Oregon Trail. Speaking of that, I got Oregon Trail in the Steam sale, which is actually is a remake of Oregon Trail in for zombies. So it's the same kind of, exactly the same presentation. Um, Oregon Trail kind of sounds like a porn version. Yeah, it's it's not, thankfully, thankfully. But I know there are a lot of, uh, <laughs> of get undesirable games on uh, on Steam. So yeah, if somebody I'm, makes it, link it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, it's a good game. Um, the other game I've been playing is Prey, uh, which is an old oldish game. It's not the original Prey on the Xbox 360. No. I've got that as well. But I've never played it. I got it as part of that pack that I talked about last week that I got like 30 games for next to nothing. Um, never played it. Probably should have played it because it was apparently quite good. Um, but this one, it's like a, it's done by Arcane Studios, so the same people that do, did Dishonored, um, which is obviously heavily influenced by Deus Ex, you know, that kind of multiple ways to approach any problem. Very much like that. Quite scary in places as well. Um, quite. Uh, difficult to to manage yourself i'm trying to play it as a human because you can get different um a different skills so you can get typhoon skills which are as soon as you start upgrading them and you get more than three typhoon skills and i've got, I've got two at the moment i did get three and then i reloaded a save because i was like Fuck this shit um all the turrets in the entire station start attacking you and it's like the turrets oh. are one of your only like friends in the entire station because <laughs> um, you've got all this biological material inside you um but i'm really really enjoying it i'm i got it for a while just never picked it up never tried it until now is it That's just the you... base game you have yeah I, well i tend to buy the base game first i think i might have some some of the free cosmetic dlc or whatever but um i haven't i haven't got any dlc yet 
it's just because one of the DLCs looked quite interesting. It was, um, again, kind of a roguelike where you have to proceed through the station and kind of collect different parts for like future runs to make it a bit easier for yourself. Right. A lot of people were saying it, it added quite a decent element to the game. Like, you know, it had some good replayability. So it's DLC to change the game mode rather than additional missions. I, I don't know whether it's a new map or not but it's basically just kind of gives you a reason to keep playing through this shorter version of the game it's like an abridged version and then each time you play through it's different things are in different places it, mm. it sounded quite interesting though I'm, I'm considering picking it up myself i didn't think it got that that good reviews that's why i kind of left it in my steam library and i didn't touch it because i just thought oh i'm probably going to be disappointed by that but i'm thoroughly enjoying it you know i've actually not completed dishonored 2 because i got a little bit bored of that towards the middle of the game a little bit towards the end but i think i'll probably end up doing this one you can also go out into space and shit and you know and that's quite a cool element to it yeah i was gonna ask a quick, quick question about that does it does it have similarities to like the dead space franchise with like managing your ammo and stuff like that and making sure you can get through a certain point and can like more conservative with things rather than just an all guns blazing a bit like doom where you just tear through an entire station and not you have to, have about to it. absolutely be conservative um okay. i mean i'm on the normal setting i don't tend to play games on hard settings anymore these days i yeah. used to punish myself but now i don't have enough time <laughs> to keep restarting and re you know and getting good at a game um yeah yeah it's it's very much you run out of you get um you get these things called recycler charges that you can throw and okay. it's like a it's like a grenade and then if there's any gear around it'll suck it into it and it'll turn it into materials you use those materials or you you can recycle trash in a recycler and you you basically get materials and you can use them in a, a fabrication machine and you can create things once you've got blueprints but they're in okay. set areas in the world and i love the hub the hub based gameplay as well where you go i like going back on myself as long as there's a good reason to and it's not it doesn't feel arbitrary so far it hasn't I've still got loads of the station to explore and there's loads of outside I haven't looked at yet, but it's some really hard bits. I mean, especially when you come across a new typhoon and you haven't got enough ammo and you're like, oh, I just I just discovered this thing called a, the Nightmare, which is, God damn it, it's scary. It, I, the, I, was, I mean, the name kind of suggests it is, but... <laughs> that was another question I did have about it, is does it have its horror elements and you've just confirmed it? Because I'd... I'd... I'm a bit of a wimp when it comes to that stuff because I haven't. I've I've got Dead Space one that I'm about two thirds of the way through, and I won't play Dead Space two, <laughs> but I want to get to Dead Space three so I can play it with my friends. But I just can't get past the point. So if Prey is similar to that. I might I might pick it up like maybe. I am an absolute like... pussy when it comes to horror games. I mean, I I still have <laughs> nightmares about Clive Barker's Undying from back in the nineties. <laughs> I swear to God, um, but no, the, there is a horror element to it. It's okay. more of it's more shock as soon as you start realizing how the enemies work you, you figure them out and you're like right I, I know how to deal with this one now but there was an element i walked into a, a, a room again just a random area there's lots of exposition and kind of picking up you know like in deus ex where you read computer notes and things and you you open up um you get codes for passcodes and passwords for computers and stuff um there's one area it's like a secret area behind somewhere and I, I went into it and there's there's this uh, like glass all the way around it and there's a thing in the game a concept in the game called the looking glass and you basically it's like a 3d projection it's a, a screen that you look at and it's a 3d projection that you look into so it's like the, the it's like a 3d video um and it's something they've developed on the station and there's one area where it's it's set up and you already know it's what it's supposed to do you turn it on and then there's a, a flash of like a, 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 a it just sort of shit me up I had, a, I had a wrench in my hand at the time and this flash of this kind of phantom one of the enemies in the game popped up and I just smashed the glass in front of me <laughs> it wasn't even there it was just the glass and I was fucking shit my pants but that's that's the beauty of that kind of thing it didn't it was actually there but it was behind me but it wasn't that behind uh, me and it kept like, the, the enemies are a bit weird They'll, they're not human you know they're aliens yeah. they're, it's, it's it's a good game. I'm really enjoying. If you like Dishonored, if you like Deus Ex, and you don't mind the horror element, I wouldn't say it's a horror like full on horror yeah. game. There's some gore in it, you know. There's lots of eeriness. The the music's pretty good, you know. The the themes and everything. It's it's a good game to get your heart racing a little bit, but it's not like full on scary. Yeah. Okay. It's not gore. It's not like Dead Space gore. Ah, uh, yeah, like. Some pretty bad stuff in that game. That's yeah. why I won't go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Yeah. 
I did uh, originally play. Well, I didn't really say. I say I played it. I didn't. Uh, I may used to come around <laughs> and I used to watch him play it. The original. <laughs> I found the intro was. It. In fact, I had a demo for it as well. So I kind of played the intro to it. And you were. I think you were. Maybe even Native Americans in a bar or casino or something, and then suddenly portals open up and you just get sucked in, and you're just like, "That's it, you're in the game now." And I think I watched him play through it, and it's yeah, it's kind of cool, but there was some of that like horror kind of vibes to it. I'm not such a fan of horror. This no. I don't know. I'm not a horror <laughs> fan in general, but I don't mind it if there's a thriller or there's an interesting element to it, and I do find that with Prey. I, I, I'm amazed I liked it. I didn't think I would. I don't know why. I didn't even look. I said I'm not the kind of person who looks up trailers and follows things. If I want to play it, I'll just get it, and then I'll play it whenever I'm ready. But it's another one that I kind of slapped myself on the wrist, and I should have played it when it came out, really. It's good. It's good. Okay, so next section, games we're looking forward to. We haven't got a name for this yet. We are tragically trying to come up with something probably something alliterative and really horrible but we'll get there at some point and um let's uh, let's start with let's start with Danny what are you, oh, what are you looking forward to what's so, that? you're a, you're a podcast host that's how it works mate <laughs> come on be professional <laughs> i was um looking the other day through like upcoming releases and came across something called greedfall I don't know if either of you have heard of that game I have, and yes. uh, took a look into it and it's it interested me because it seems, and I keep going back to this game, seems very tiny you versus big monster. And there's a theme running here, like Monster Hunter World, Dark Souls, it reminds me of quite a lot. Um, dodge rolling and that kind of thing. Hmm. It's The the aesthetic of it is pretty cool, to be fair. It's like 17th century, like set in like the basically, like, um, it's almost like, French, I'd say, like the dress is very like you know French and what have you. Revolutionary, um, yeah. revolution and eerie, yeah. So um, basically, action RPG um, seems like it would very closely follow like what you do in Monster Hunter World, which I've got no problems against. But also brings in a bit that grittiness where you just you are just a very tiny guy who goes up and stabs a big massive monster for a tiny bit of damage off the health bar and you've got to make sure that your timing's right to actually get to the end of the boss or what have you and um yeah it looks like it's releasing 10th of september which is quite soon actually I yeah i don't sure. think so, it, it hasn't been announced for very long as far as i'm aware because i've no, only it, it, was only, out nowhere. it was a couple of months ago i'm currently reading a playstation mag that has that as the preview in it there's no, there's no full like. It's, it's not even. We've got a, a game to actually review here. This is the concept, um, and it, it sounds interesting. It's not something I've looked into much, but it does sound like it's. It might be a game I'll, I'll play. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, very much similar to um, to Monster, literally Monster Hunter World, in that it does appear that you are like outsiders coming to an island, and you've got to try and find out what's sort of like infesting the island, and that's and then kill like, everything. And kill everything again. Stop I've got to kill it for its oh. skin. Yeah. <laughs> I've definitely got a theme running in here where I like <laughs> to play games that cool things. Um but yeah, it looks really interesting. Just it it seems like you I don't know if like I've not read enough into it to know whether like there's multiplayer or anything like that, but it does seem I've seen a couple of clips of video and it does seem like you can kind of stop combat midway through to drop through like an inventory system. All right. and look at you know that kind of thing so it's not literally as punishing as you would find on a dark souls game or souls one game or anything like that to seem like you can break it up but it does it does seem like something i would like to try because i like to get good really with those types of games like dodging and you know getting combos in and stuff like that it is it is of interest to me plus like where it's set it looks it looks really really good as to where it's set it's just like old boats and old towns and stuff like that it looks brilliant do you know what developer um, it is I don't. I can fact check it for you though. Um, oh, well, it's, have a look. It's, it's interesting only because you can usually by figuring out the developer, you can figure out what kind oh, of so, game yeah. it's going to be. The developer called Spiders. Oh, I've never come across. No, I'm not. Yeah. Um, I've never see. heard of them either. I'm trying to think if they've got anything else that they've actually released. Spider Man. Like Twenty employees. <laughs> <laughs> That's Marvel, mate. That's Marvel. Ah, Marvel. Or Disney. Maybe. Well, might have heard some of these let's not talk about that. Let's not go there. But they've not released anything since 2016. And they released the Technomancer. 
Bound by Flame. Oh, Technomancer, that's got awful reviews on Steam. That had that had so much hype leading up to it. I put it on my <laughs> wish list and I watched it and I watched it and I thought, oh, this is going to be awesome. It looks brilliant. You know, cyberpunk, kind of futuristic, like sci- psionic powers and stuff. Yeah. Absolute dog shit, apparently. Okay, that makes me hold reservations about Greedfall then, if it was yeah. bad. I'd wait uh, for the... I tend to wait I'd, for at right. least the user reviews to come in for games these days to, before I commit to them, or commit unless, you know, if I put them on a wish list and a couple of quid, I'll grab it just to have yeah. a go. But Yeah, fair enough. They seem to have marketed it quite well. The cinematics and everything they've put out seem pretty good, but again, with any game, they can make those look as good as they want and the game can no- look nothing like it at the end, so I'm not really too focused in on those, but if they do pull off what they say they're going to pull off, I think I'll probably give that a buy to be fair if it mm. turns out to be good from user reviews but yeah i mean do, does it have a same aesthetic style as say bloodborne because that's kind of what i not, thought when you were yeah not quite as gritty and dark as that um okay. very literally is like you're just like a sailor from well it appears as though you're like a sailor from 17th, the 17th century and you're all you dress with the flared stuff on your neck and all that kind of stuff and you've got literally like a tripoint hat yeah, try pointing at that. Yeah, that's moving more to Bloodborne, isn't it? <laughs> it's starting to sound more and more like Bloodborne. I'm trying not to 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 paint it like that, but um, you said yeah. you said sailor, and the first thing I thought is, can I RP as Popeye? Is that something I can do? <laughs> not saying <laughs> so, no. <laughs> but see, I've not seen any progression of the character in, in in anything that I've seen so far either, so I'm not sure what you're going to be able to do as as your character. Whether it's just like a weapons you get better weapons or if you're actually leveling up literally you know um stats like dexterity and things like that i'm not 100 percent sure well come back to us when you've got a bit more information next week or the week after something yeah it's it it is someone to watch and i don't know when you said it's september isn't it? it's coming out end of september so it's pretty close so i'm not sure if that yeah We'll have to see on that one. I said it's 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 on my list. It's on my watch list, but that's about it so yeah. far. But so was things like Ghost of Tsushima. I was I really was quite interested in that, but I haven't since it's been released. I haven't even looked into it to see if it's any good. So I haven't had time. I've been I've got many yeah. other games to go. <laughs> All right. So Matt, what have uh, what have you looking forward to this week? This week, I'm looking forward to The Outer Worlds, which is being produced by Obsidian. If so- anybody remembers it, then. I feel like I know that title. Is it a remake, a reimagining? Is it something that's been released previously? No. Um, the reason you might be kind of getting mixed up with that is they produced Fallout New Vegas as well as Pillars of Eternity and a few other RPG games, which I'm sure people will be very keen to remind me of. Oh no, I know the developer. I just mean the Outer Worlds, the title. I feel like I've, oh. I feel like I know that from something. As far as I'm aware, I don't. I think it's a new story, a new IP, everything right. else. I don't. I don't think it's actually following on from anything. Although it has been kind of touted as a, a spiritual successor to New Vegas, which is why I'm so excited for it. Okay. Okay. So, um, it looks to be a bit of a possibly a bit of a smaller experience. Like they're, they're not they're not trying to build it as like a massive open world. I mean, it is a big open world, but it's not. It's not kind of what you'd think with like fallout where you're you know plunked in the middle of like a big map and it's just you run around there's there's different planets to explore there's a lot of rpg elements there's a lot of the things that they kind of missed out on in fallout 4 so things like you know you've got proper dialogue choices you've got a lot more options when it comes to like how you approach things they've got kind of silly weapons and things like that it's 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 kind of moving away from the kind of kind of realism i guess that fallout 4 was edging towards and it's just it's it looks like it's trying to keep it fun it's a sci-fi adventure there's you know the sci-fi characters there's a mad scientist there's a robot a person gets shot and everybody acts so surprised that they got shot i don't really know how i'm supposed to sell it but it looks good to me so what is it is it a first person game is it a rpg it's it's a first person rpg so You've got all your standard RPG things. You've got all your stats, which we all love. You know, everybody loves to make a number bigger than the last number. You've got athletics. A lot of athletics one hundred in in Oblivion will never be, never be beaten. <laughs> Was that when you could like jump over that's, buildings? That's my favourite stat. Yes. Oh, ridiculous. Um, but yeah, there's. It just looks like they've kind of they've tread the line very carefully between it being a fun sci-fi adventure 
and also just being kind of it's got a sense of humor about it it understands the world it understands what it's trying to be it's not trying to be too serious but it's not trying to be too silly either it's it's treading that line and i really like the look of it i i, I like sci-fi as kind of just a, a genre anyway so to have something like this where you can you, you know you, i think you can get a gun way it's like a shrink ray and if you shoot somebody and shrink them then you can like run over to them and basically just stomp them <laughs> like you don't have to do, you just like run over them um so there's a lot of kind of fun guns and things like that in there there's a lot of there's a lot of like nice little things like you can take um you can take negative stat updates upgrades um so say there's like a, i don't know the names there's like a dog type alien and you you could take a negative thing where you're afraid of them so they kind of do more damage and i think that basically lets you shift like you're afraid of that but in return you get a slightly better stat elsewhere so you can use it if you want to role play or if you want to kind of min max against a certain thing or a certain enemy it just looks like they've kind of been really considerate and with the pedigree they've got for rpg games i think they'll really pull it off mm. yeah, it's, it, yeah. it sounds like it might be a looker for me i, I feel like I've, I've definitely heard that name i might have just seen a, a preview or something in a magazine or on steam it might even be on my wish list i'm an idiot not these time, not these <laughs> no i'm definitely looking forward to it as i say it's i mean they were very clever about saying in the adverts you know from the makers of fallout new vegas like that's all they had to say to me to sell it to me like okay <laughs> I'll, I'll trust you i missed that boat unfortunately i played 90 minutes of new vegas but i've played Fine. three and four to death so i probably yeah, should have I... played new vegas no, go, I really if, if you get time, go back and play it. it it's it is good. It, it's by far the best one. It, it's just again, it treads that line between serious story and fun. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to pick end up picking that up anyway, just because I enjoyed New Vegas a lot, and from the imagery I've seen of Outer Worlds, it does seem like a less serious version of Fallout, but still very similar in some aesthetic. You know, the aesthetics of it. It's like the old like 50s and 60s electronics and stuff that they sort of their future basically it looks it looks really really cool so i think i'll definitely give that a try when it does come out i mean from what i've heard on the development side because um microsoft took over obsidian they've been really kind of pushing for them to just do what you want is you know here's the microsoft checkbook do what you want so <laughs> nice I, I, I can only hope one day they say the same to me <laughs> right okay um so the game that i uh, have i'm looking forward to is uh playstation 4 exclusive the last of us part two oh. now the have i'm not the i have to have um i played it all on a recommendation from one of the previous podcast residence arcade podcast hosts who's a, basically a playstation 4 exclusive guy that's pretty much a playstation guy you know he's, he's had them in time life and he, he talked about it with such passion and such love of some particular scenes like there's a scene in in the last of us where you you've just been killing all of these freakers are they called freakers no they're not that's the wrong game that's one of the most that stays gone isn't it anyway you've been killing these zombie things don't say the z word but um and then you you come into this really calm serene area and you see a load of giraffes and he talked about it with yeah. such such love and such passion that he sold the game to me from that one scene um so i played it enjoyed it got i fucking hated the actual gameplay of the game but i love the story I'm looking forward to the new game because of the story and I'm hoping that they pace it a little bit better. Now, it's a 10 out of 10 game. Every magazine bums it to death. You know, it's it's totally and utterly loved for, for what it is. It is a bit of a masterpiece when it comes down to it. But for me, it it's like Red Dead Redemption 2. It was a masterpiece, but my God, the gameplay can get really, really laborious in it. It's not as much fun. I don't enjoy playing it as much but i'm still going to get this game there's hype surrounding it we still don't know what's happening with ellie we don't know what's happening with joel we don't know you know all of the ins and outs of the story and what's happened I think, is it 10 years later or she's she's older i'm not I'm, looked at it but uh yeah I'm, plus she, I was... she's a lesbian as well she's she, she apparently that's apparently like half of the story it's like how did that happen where, where did that come from that's a, a bombshell out of nowhere mind you i suppose if you played the dlc 
of the original game. If you've, I've, I've, I might be talking to deaf ears here. Have either of you played the original game? I have. I played the original no. game, but I never oh. had a PlayStation Four myself. So I, I played it around at a friend's, right? Literally, however many thousand miles away, literally a different country. I played. I literally was on holiday and spent. I got. I was on holiday. I was supposed to be chilling by the pool. I turned The Last of Us on. Played ten <laughs> minutes of it. I was like, right, fuck the pool. I'm playing this game <laughs> and played it all the way through, start to finish, and I've. I loved it. It's a brilliant. It's a brilliant game, but I didn't get to play a DLC for it because I only literally had it's you know a limited amount of time to get through it. And I will yeah. do the same with The Last of Us Two. I will find a PlayStation Four to play it on because I loved the story of it. It was brilliant. Did, I mean, there was. The, I said that I, for me, the pacing, some of the actual um, areas of the game where you had to. Con I think I made the mistake of playing it on the hardest difficulty again, and I probably shouldn't have done that because I just. Yeah. It's just laborious in places. Um, and I won't make that mistake with the second one, but I'm just really interested to see where it goes. There were some good elements in it, and they will improve that as well. I wasn't a fan of the other Naughty Dog games either. Um, I've got the Nathan Drake collection. I got it late. I've got Uncharted 4, not actually ever played it. It's it's just, I played the first three, and the fourth one I haven't touched yet, just because I'm like, oh, it's just another on-rails shooter with a cocky protagonist. and mm. Yeah. I like I like variation, you know. I like innovation in my games, and I don't feel like there's that much in in those in particular. Yeah, I don't particularly like the Uncharted series. Like I played that on other people's rigs as well, and yeah, I'd say it's just the atmosphere of like the what they did with the world and and it not being strictly a zombie game. They're infected, aren't they? Basically, mm. it's not like they they just want to kill you not like eat you it's like a slightly different take on it which is which is nice but some of the scenes in that game just like shocked me um i think there's i'm not gonna spoil it for everybody but i'm gonna use oh, my that. headphones off it's okay <laughs> there's um there's a scene in it's really snowy and you've been chased around a bar slash restaurant that was kind of haunting harrowing mm. is the word i think and it's just bits and bobs like that that are that just make a game like more polished because it affects you properly and it's not just like oh you know that was a pretty shitty action sequence it's, well, the, other, it the other reason i enjoyed playing it the, the story my wife actually really enjoyed watching that game as well and i said i do talk about my, my, me and my wife playing games quite a lot she's not a, particularly into games but she enjoys that part of our you know relationship which is great for me and yeah. the fact that she was really invested in the character she wants to see the end of that as well she wants to i mean i don't know if it's going to be the end they might do a trilogy they might do they five might games like uncharted they probably will milk the hell out of it you know and it'll <laughs> and you'll, on the third one you'll be like i'm not playing another on the rails infected shooter i'm yep. done with this series <laughs> <laughs> but there's a survival element to it as well which isn't done to the extent that i like my survival elements i like the you know I like <laughs> you picking want, you individual want berries <laughs> individual berries yes and yeah um yeah, anyway, so let's move on to the uh, to this section. This is the section where we talk about hardware, gaming hardware, new releases, new consoles, anything. Basically anything that Matt and Danny want to talk about because pff, I'm not that bothered. <laughs> <laughs> you're really setting this section up for us Chris no it's it's that it's that there's so much bloody hardware out there there's so many new consoles and everything's going to be st st Google Scad okay, what, what's it called? The Slate no, the, the, the streaming <laughs> services everything's going to be streaming isn't it in the future so hardware's Stadia. not going to matter an ounce yeah, in the future Stadia Stadia that's it yeah Yeah. sorry yeah so sorry. all the stuff we're about to tell you about doesn't matter just get Google Stadia yeah. we're not sponsored don't, by it, don't want get to sponsor Google it. Stadia <laughs> see you later Nvidia see you later AMD nobody needs your shit anymore because we're just going to use Google services <laughs> the technological overlord of the world don't worry, Rise guys. It's going to fail. It's going to fall on its ass. I'm telling you. <laughs> Either that or enslave humanity. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> GTX twenty eight, <laughs> GTX twenty eight to Super has finally been revealed to nobody's surprise because, well, we all knew it was coming, and it looks like it's basically more of the same as we had with the twenty sixty Super, the twenty seventy Super. It's not quite as much of an upgrade as they seem to be, though. It's like some games i think the the highest i've seen is like a nine percent performance increase over the 2080 so i mean it's the same price so if you were going to upgrade anyway you're going to get a bit more bang for your buck what's a super but, then is that below a tie but above a standard yeah it's basically just 
and it's basically just kind of taking the place of the old 2080 it's it's essentially just a refresh of the hardware right so right. they might they might might be been slightly yeah. better but yeah so it seems like they've they've done away with the ti thing for the lower gen because they used to do the original numbering scheme and then they'd release a ti version which would be slightly improved and it's basically they've done that for everything apart from they can't do it for the 2080 because they've well have they done it for the 2080 because they can't really outdo the ti 2080 if you get what i mean so it sort of like sits in between them if they've done one for the 2080 but i've not really kept up with the super stuff to be honest on the nvidia side i mean the 2080 it does very slightly close the gap between the very slightly close the gap but i mean what you've got to bear in mind as well is that the 2080 ti is a thousand pounds graphics card or it's 700 quid for the 2080 so if it did approach the performance of a 2080 ti then then it kills everybody it just off. yeah yeah it, so they're, they're not going to do that it's, it's of no benefit of them for them really i've got to say i uh, i have a 2080 ti um i've from from direct experience i used to have a gen 5 i7 um, it was an extreme i7, 3.5 gig, 12 core, I think it was, um, 5820k, possibly. Sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, and I got a 2080 tie, put it in that machine, almost every, and I, I got it for 4K mostly, because I have a 4K screen for work. It's really, really handy, and, and I wanted to start actually gaming in 4K. And it just... It nothing ran in 60 fps nothing at all i've upgraded to an i9 extreme i can't give you the exact model i can in fact it's a 9820x and that's it's everything's running like a dream almost everything apart from rust rust still does not run in 4k <laughs> uh, but that's well known not to <laughs> but other than that everything like i'm playing prey 20 60 fps exactly full 4k almost almost full settings i just turned out the earliest enough and it's running beautifully so it does make a difference but i think i mean i don't know if this is the consensus across the hardware community but i i needed that cpu upgrade to take advantage of it and i yeah the, the the bottlenecking is an issue with these cards you're going to get to a certain point where you either upgrade everything or you might as well not upgrade at all that that's the issue i'm having at the moment like i want to upgrade my cpu and I also want to upgrade my GPU, but it's the expense of it to do both to get any meaningful gain is so high mm. that it's just prohibitive. It's, to be fair, it's the entire PC, basically. Like the other stuff in re yeah. relative to it is nothing. I already had DDR4. Is that what we're on, DDR4? I'm sorry, I'm totally new, total noob with this hardware stuff. Um, I'm on DDR4 RAM, but I was on 2800 um, megahertz. Okay. And I've all I've done is is just literally taken it out of one and put it in the other. No issues with that whatsoever. But I have thirty two gig as well, so I'm I'm working all right, and it's I've got no issues with the speed. I don't really feel like I need to upgrade that. I don't feel like it's necessary. So I was lucky in that because I had an extreme, because I had a, a um a DDR four already, and it was the fastest I could get at the time of my upgrade. I haven't needed to upgrade, but we're at four and a half k now, aren't we? It's approaching the four thousand mark, is isn't it? it? Right. I, I think like... MSI have got a five k monitor out. Oh, we talking about monitors? Yeah. No, RAM sorry, no RAM RAM speeds. Um, oh, sorry, I'm... it's all right. <laughs> Getting things up. Um, I'm pretty sure there's definitely thirty six hundred. I'm pretty sure there's four thousand megahertz modules as well. So yeah, right. it has gone a long way. But... but there's a certain point where it's diminishing returns as well. Yeah. And the chip price increases massively at that point as well. Um, but the whole super thing just seemed a bit weird to me, them releasing it. It seems like a bit of a preemptive strike at AMD because they came out with a 7 nanometer fabrication process. And that seems like they they might know that AMD might come out with something that could tackle them on the, you know, the rasterization side that gets close to the 2080 and possibly the 2080i. So I think them just... Releasing the supers is just like shoving as many and drowning all consumers with as many cards as possible as quickly as possible just mm. to get sales in, um, because the obviously they dropped the RX fifty seven hundred haven't they and the XT for that as well, which is seven nanometer and I think AMD are ahead of the curve on the fabrication process so temperatures seem to be better as well um, than the RTX cards because obviously it's a smaller 
I also did yeah. upgrade my uh, my cooling as well because I was in a server case. I think I actually discussed it with you guys at, at the time, or at least you might have seen some of the discussion. Yeah, I, think um, did, yeah. I upgraded everything and I got a I got a nice Corsair case. I've got 180 mil fans now. I've got proper airflow, um, and it's I've never had the cards never ever hit. You know the fans have never turned on big time in the card now, um, so I make that's made a big difference as well. But I think I th it was it was struggling even when I first started a game up, so it wasn't like it was overheating and yeah. having issues. I always tend to find that even I don't know how the latest stuff is because I've not touched it. But when they did the Vega fifty six and the Vega sixty four, um, that was their sort of answer to the ten the ten series of cards. Uh, I put I put one in for a customer and. Even in the BIOS, it ran warm. You know, you touch the back plate and it's like, ouch, that's hot. And it just makes me wonder sometimes what they're doing with their, their power management on these cards as well. Um, but hopefully, if they get that under control, it makes it more appealing. And I think it'll probably be the deciding factor. If it can keep up with 4K and it can run just as cool as I want it to run, i.e. not throttle itself late, you know, it gets up to a certain temperature, then I'll probably move to Team Red and it'll be the first Team Red graphics card I've had ever. Like, never ran them. Always had NVIDIA from the GTX 460, which is a long time now. <laughs> you, you can't. What an issue to have. I'm sorry, um, yeah, my I need an upgrade for my GPU. The card's over here. Oh, what are you trying to run? BIOS. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not even joking, though. It was pretty bad, but I hope they sort that stuff out because I do I do want to move to AMD because they do a few nice things like the full free sync support on the monitors and stuff like that. that's pretty nice I know Nvidia kind of like backtracked and said oh we'll do we'll do free sync to your free sync monitors if you want but yeah that was such so a th I wouldn't bother <laughs> I've got a g-sync monitor it's useless I turn it off most of the time it's really? absolutely useless yeah. I see, I, I disagree with you. I've, I've got a G-Sync monitor, and for gaming, I love it. Especially like with a, a slightly older card, it means that I don't really have to worry if the frames don't really sync up. I just don't have to think about screen tear. I haven't had a, a. There might be one or two games that successfully work in G-Sync, but most of the time, I mean, I don't. I suppose I don't notice it with some games, some of the, the higher quality ones. But I play a lot of indie games, and they maybe just don't have the support uh, for it, and, and it's. I, I usually have to turn turn that off, turn V-Sync off, or turn V-Sync on. I have to faff around with the settings for ages to get it working adequately, you know? Um, yeah, I can see is, that being an issue, yeah. But, um, yeah, carrying on with the AMD talk, though, I think they kind of crushed... They did the Radeon 7 series, which I found out earlier was actually five months ago now, which is quite surprising. Didn't realise it had passed that quickly. But they kind of crushed their Radeon 7 stuff. They didn't release that for very long. I think they did that five months later they've just released something else that's hard like 200 quid cheaper and just is the same thing maybe a bit better and they've just completely crushed that so uh, i think i think they might have got something in the works though because they've followed the if you look at the older amd cards the rx 570 rx 580 um from amd they've now moved to the rx 5700 and 5700 xt kind of makes me think they might drop something like a 5800 5800 XT, which could be interesting. Um, if the 50, because apparently the 5700 is chasing the 2070, I believe, in terms of performance. So it's it up. chasing it. It's not quite reaching it, not I don't quite think. There, but maybe if they've got something else in the works, they might, they might start catching up. I don't think they're going to ever, you know, come out with something that's just going to annihilate the competition. But I think the 5700s just it's very much kind of them trying to it's like a proof of concept I guess really yeah. it's like the, you know this we can see here that it works so what can we do if we make the die bigger you know what yeah. performance can we get yeah it'd be interesting to see what they do it's good that they've moved to that 7 nanometer because it means big things could be coming and fingers yeah. crossed I think mm. we're on to the actual console section of hardware hot pants now aren't we I think yeah, well, we, we discussed last week the, the new Switch that they announced, the Switch Lite, wasn't it? The Switch Lite I talked about, yeah. yeah. Which um, I want to correct myself on, by the way. And right. I messed up on the clock speeds. They didn't, they'd ha they haven't lowered the clock speeds, but because they can't dock the new Switch Lite, it doesn't get the boost. Because it goes up to 1080p when you plug it into a TV, doesn't it? And then on the hand, mm -hmm. handheld, it's 720p. That's where I got confused. So just right. to correct myself on last week's episode, they didn't drop the clock speeds. It's just going to play as the original one did handheld. Right. So 
the the day that we we recorded the podcast, it's probably the news was probably already out, but we just hadn't caught up with it. Um, they had also via Twitter, Nintendo released a new Switch, which was kind of all it is is a refresh by the looks of it, and it just has better battery life. The model number is exactly the same, so it's HAC zero zero one, and then in brackets dash zero one. <laughs> now that's the new edition, the dash zero one in brackets. Um, but yeah, the, binary. all all it is is it gives it gives it a little bit more extended battery life, and this doesn't seem to be any changes whatsoever. So it's basically version two, revision two of the Switch. So they're going to be replacing all the. Was versions. that a big moan of the Switch? The battery life? Have they been hearing that a lot from consumers? I think in games like Breath of the Wild, you get two, two, two and a half hours okay. out of it. Um, but it yeah. should go up to around four hours with this this new one. I can't remember the exact stats. Go and have a listen to a more competent podcast, you know, to to <laughs> to figure that out. Um, but they the the again, it all depends on what you're doing on the Switch. I think itself. If you play an intensive game like Breath of the Wild, yeah, you only get a few hours. But I've never had a problem personally. I play it remotely yeah. all the time, but I don't play it remotely for that long. Yeah. I think, yeah, mentioning last week I said I would probably go for a Switch Lite, but now that they've come out with like a Switch 2.0, probably move towards that rather than Lite, because I kind of was mulling it over thinking I would actually like to be able to dock it and take the Joy-Cons off and have like couch gaming sessions. I don't want to just be a selfish guy and just be like, oh, I've got this Switch, but it's only mine and only I can play it. You can fuck off. So I think I will like redirect my own Switch. <laughs> I'll buy the revision, I think, of the um, of the Switch that follows the OG one but have they, there's been some issues with the Joy-Cons haven't there like, yeah the drift, the drift issues and, and they've actually there's actually been a class action lawsuit started against them as well Ooh, um, nice. yeah the, the 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 apparently the if the drift on the actual control sticks themselves and I get, I've got it on one of my 360 my old 360 controllers at the moment but it happens over time with some controllers but apparently it happens like they'll send it away they'll get it they'll, it'll take six weeks to get repaired it'll get sent back and then four four or five days later people are getting the drift again and apparently you can you can you there's some on youtube there's some aftermarket uh, fixes that you can apply and you can get some cheap parts from china to you know to replace inside it and you can do the fix yourself without void your warranty it shouldn't be happening oh, yeah. in the first place yeah. it's kind of yeah it's a problem i had a problem with my joy con uh blue joy con i think it was um where it was disconnecting all the time, which was a problem right at the beginning. Sent it away, got it back. Haven't had a problem since, but then again, I've also got a Pro Controller, so I don't use it that much anymore. So I can't tell you if yeah. it's if it's still occurring. It's, still mm, okay. it's, the, it's a great console, but yeah, the Joy-Cons are a little bit naff. The, the build quality does kind of feel a bit uh, plasticky. But mm. I mean, general, generally, I don't really think about it. If I'm playing the game and it, I don't notice it, that's as good a pass for me, isn't it? You'd notice that disconnect problem I had, honestly, especially playing some, you know, if you're playing Breath of the Wild or or, or Mario or whatever and you're, you're relying on it, it just cuts out every few minutes, especially if you're aiming on the screen for something, you know, it's really, re in fact, I fell off, uh, fell off the world quite a few times playing Odyssey. Uh, just because the <laughs> just because the, the it disconnected it, it'd still be going forward, you know, while I'm doing it. <laughs> so it'll be safe to say that they'll fix them for the Gen Two. Then, cause they don't no, that's the problem. Way. They haven't fixed them, and it's unlikely oh, they've they got. Them at all. That's the problem. Yeah, that's a, obviously they haven't been Why? they haven't been released yet. I don't think these Gen Two consoles. But the problem is, is that they aren't addressing the initial issue in current Gen consoles. So, Gen okay. yeah. I might have to see what happens with that then, because there's no point. I'd just get back to the Switch Lite. I Jury's don't have out. the Joy-Con problem. Yeah. yeah well, well no, the thing we'll is, you, you don't have the Joy-Con problem at all when it's connected to the console. It works fine. It works perfectly yeah. fine in handheld mode when you're, you know, you're twiddling your thumbs on the app where it's connected. But if you disconnect them and you want to start using them, which I said, there's only... There's a few games that you'd want to do that with. Um, the games that I've got, only Odyssey I prefer to, because it's only because when you, you waft one of your hands, he throws his hat. Um, and it's much easier to do with the Joy Cons than it is on the on the Pro, Pro controller. Control. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to uh, sit on that one for a bit longer. I've been sitting on the Switch since it came out, so I wonder how long it'll be before I actually get. I'll probably pick one up from like CEX or something like ten years down the line. Well, with never with the original <laughs> problems and the shit battery life and worse <laughs> battery life because people will have ragged it to death. Yep, will have. Yeah, brilliant. All right. So, yeah. I wouldn't bother. <laughs> wouldn't bother. Just skip this generation, mate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, wait for the pro. 
And that is the end of the show. Thanks for listening, and we hope to see you next time on Resonance Arcade. You can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. You can follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, you should join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com where we hang out and discuss all things gaming. Sometimes. If there's people in there. <laughs> and I'll, all, that's, all that's left to say is thank you very much to everybody and goodbye. goodbye. See you later. Ta-ta.